Hey everybody, it's John Schumacher here with NewWaveHealthcare.com and just want to give you guys a quick reminder before we get started today that we are a video podcast, so if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher Radio and you like video content like I like, go over to NewWaveHealthcare.com to check out all of our interviews via video format. We also link up all of our, our guests' contact information as well as any resource mentioned during the interviews. So if you're interested in healthcare innovation, if you're interested in marketing, healthcare, entrepreneurship, those type of topics, head over to NewWaveHealthcare.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our email list. We put out a weekly Friday uh, curated list of all kinds of awesome articles as well as the replay of each week's interview right there to your email box. We also have a couple free downloads that we're kicking out, so don't forget to subscribe there. And I think that's it for announcements. Yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Today, my guest is Christine Blanche, who is the CEO of Integrative Health Solutions, which is a holistic health center in Long Island, New York. Christine's also a certified physician's assistant with over 20 years of experience practicing medicine. Uh, and her current focus kind of went from that Western medicine style of, of, of healthcare to more of a holistic approach at her, at her health center now. So she's going to be talking a little bit about how she created that. Uh, she's also quite a bit of a health entrepreneur. She's got a lot of really neat things going as beyond her physical clinic. She's got a lot of really neat things online as well. So this is going to be a really fruitful discussion on kind of how to take your ideas and, and start with them maybe locally, but then to kind of scale those out and creating products and services so that you can reach a larger audience. So Christine, thanks so much for coming on and, and chatting a little bit with us. Uh, let's just have you start off. Just share a little bit about you personally, and then we'll jump into your story. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, I really appreciate being here. Um, as John said, I'm a physician assistant, and I have a holistic health center here in uh, Long Island, New York. And um, I've been practicing medicine for 20 years. The first 10 were focused more on conventional medicine, your typical emergency medicine, surgery, and critical care. And, um, and now I've shifted my focus more into integrative medicine, and uh, holistic healthcare. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. And so to boil it down for our listeners a little bit, you have a, a wonderful offline, on-site health center for holistic you know, care and holistic needs for a lot of wonderful, uh, for patients that need that kind of service, which is, is everybody basically. Everyone should be thinking about preventative medicine. But uh, can you boil it down for us, kind of what you guys are really uh, up to there? Yeah, we practice integrative medicine, which is really a, a preventative focus. Um, and, um, you know, a patient will come in and we'll spend an hour just listening to their story. Um, and I always say I'm listening like a detective. I'm listening for underlying imbalances and red flags and patterns and things that may suggest maybe where a body is not balanced or could be better balanced. And then also thinking preventatively for their future too, you know, what family history, what kind of things run in the family, and what can we do right now with their nutrition, their stress relief, their lifestyle to get them preventing those diseases, potential diseases in their future. Um, so we really put a treatment plan together that sort of grabs their hand and, and takes them where they, they, they want to go, which is to feel great and to stay healthy for as long as possible. So that's what we do on the hands-on hands -in, hands everyday approach. Awesome. Yeah, okay. so what kind of services you guys doing, you know, what kind of services do you guys offer there? Yeah, we have um, the, the integrative medicine approach, um, which is basically a new patient visit, um, and then the, we, they come back for the follow-up visit. We also do something called thermography, which is pretty cool technology. It's a far-infrared camera, which takes a picture of the body, and it gives us an idea of what kind of inflammation is going on, what kind of patterns are going on. It's a very non-invasive test, but can be very, very helpful to see what's going on in a patient's body. And we do things like Reiki and acupuncture and meditation and nutrition and all kinds of stress relief, massage, all kinds of good stuff. Wow, that's wonderful. I need to stop by New York one of these days. Yeah, you'll have like to fly you over. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's worth it right there. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you started off for your first, I think you said 10 years or so, in sort of the Western approach of, of medicine and then transition more into the more holistic uh, approach to things. Uh, did you? Can you talk to us a little bit about, I guess you say, your aha moment where you realized that, wow, this was this is something that I wasn't paying enough attention to that did a light bulb pop off in your head and, and, you, Big and time. you discovered yeah. <laughs> that? Can you, can you take, take us to that level and share that story with us? Absolutely. I definitely had an aha moment. You know, I was practicing medicine for years and I had actually three family members get sick in a very short period of time. You know, my grandfather and then my sister-in-law got Hodgkin's lymphoma at 32 years old and my father was diagnosed with colon cancer and it was... Um, 
you know, when your family gets sick, your whole your whole life shifts and you're willing to do anything you can to find a way to get them better. And I basically started reading every book I could on holistic cancer care, integrative cancer care, everything I could find. And it was sort of like, wow, you know, I didn't learn anything about any of this in my all my conventional training with all my mentors and all my great hospital centers that I worked at. You know, I didn't learn about the connection between nutrition, nutrition and illness or stress and illness or anything outside of the box, if you will. And um, it was sort of a disenchanting moment for me because I felt a little bit um, disappointed in my training. I felt ill-prepared to handle, you know, the adventure ahead of me. Um, and um, and then I had lost my sister-in-law at 32 years old, and I mm. sort of took a step back and I, I re-evaluated, if you will. And I had so, such a... I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but really just felt so connected by the information that I had taken in from all these books on holistic cancer care that I said, you know what, I, I'm not going to be unprepared again. And so I kind of went back to school and started studying integrative medicine and getting as much information as I could um, so that I would have that in the future and, and f became very passionate about starting a place in Long Island, my home, you know, where I could develop provide this information for my patients where we really took the best of both worlds, conventional and holistic, and melded them together because I think there's tremendous value in the combination of both together. So that's what happens, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Pers personally affected by this in a big way then, so that yeah. really motivated you to shift your mind and, and motivated you to like dive into a deep study of, of you know, integrative medicine and holistic approaches to things, yeah. which is which is, which is wonderful. So it yeah, seems like absolutely. sometimes these tra tragedies are the biggest motivators, unfortunately. But Yeah, they can be turning points, that's for sure. Yeah. But it sounds like, you know, it motivated you to help a lot more people, which is just, you know, kudos to you. So Absolutely. Um, so when you started off, did you start off as just like a practitioner under another clinician, or did you just jump into launching your own place? Yeah, I had started under um, a couple of doctors that had a center, um, and then I sort of learned all about the business behind the business, and um, and then um, and then jumped out on my own um, and uh, started seeing patients. And um, you know, I, I got into sort of the digital world of medicine. Um, I had had uh, several young girls who had dropped out of college because they were so sick in a very short period of time, and. I was kind of like, oh, I'm not reaching enough people, you know. Um, I um, I feel the information is really, it's really not that hard to get to people and get them to help get better and get well. Um, so I, I was trying to find a forum for bringing my, what I teach patients online to patients, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to basically make it like an information product, a digital product, where people could get it no matter where they were in the country. Right. Um, and that, um, that's where, where I headed next, um, which was really exciting. Right, right. So, how long did you wait till you opened your own clinic? Let's let's go back to that for a second. We'll catch up with sure. the digital products, definitely. Yeah. But um, yeah. How long did you wait before you opened your own place? I was out um, working for another center for a year before I decided to go on my own. So not too long then. You did, not you too long. You weren't twiddling your thumbs too long before you really said, you know, what, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to branch out. Yep. And so, okay. So then you just, how did you start that process? Did you just you know, get a building and and go at it, or did you have, did you have an established network before you started? You know, I had a little bit of a network from having worked in the other center for a year, and um, um, but I did really just jump in with both feet and went and, and went for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little crazy when I think back on it now, <laughs> but right. it, but it worked in the end, you know. And I've heard so many folks who who jumped into a new business and they were kind of like not sure what to do. So I mean, how did you get your first customers in the door? Yeah, you know, the beginning is the hardest. I think the first year of any business is the most challenging, although the challenges always remain, you know. Um, but, um, you know, word of mouth, you know, I didn't have a huge budget to start doing, like, a huge marketing campaign, so it was really just word of mouth. I had worked in a local hospital, so I had a good network, good relationship with a lot of doctors who trusted me. Um, so I, I um, you know, utilized that as far as knowing and having a trust level. And then it was just, you know, you just had to build it. You had to put effort in in the beginning, do a good job, and and let everybody tell tell everybody about you. You know, that's really how we built it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. just that established network. So you didn't have any fancy fancy marketing tricks or anything in the beginning, huh? You were just... No, just, you know, grassroots, get out there and let people know you're there, you know. So it was it was hard work, but, it you know, it it, it always is, no matter how you do it. Right, right. 
Yeah. And so how long were you seeing patients in person before you said, you know, this just isn't enough, I needed to get my information out to more people? I launched my first information product, I guess it was um, two years ago. I had been doing um, a cleanse, uh, you know, a hands-on cleanse with my patients. Women would come every week for three weeks and I'd kind of take them through, I called it the girlfriend cleanse because they did it together with their girlfriends. Um, and it was sort of like a lifestyle change program and the results, the success that the patients had was amazing. Um, so I took that program, the base of that program, and I put it online, which I was pretty technically challenged at the time, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it definitely required a lot of work and persistence, um, but it was really um, amazing to be able to get it out there and have the first few people go through the program and see that they were getting the same successes that I was seeing in person, because it was a little scary at first, you know, are they going to are they going to be able to get it, you know, or is it going to be the same success, is it the same results, um, so it was really cool to see that that was possible. Yeah, yeah. Were you at all nervous? I know I talk to, I work with and talk to a lot of like just small, like single practitioners who are looking to put out an ebook or information products, and they're they're nervous because of their license and because of HIPAA and all these rules and stuff like that. Were you nervous about that? Did you consult with somebody, or did you just say, you know what, I have this knowledge, let's pack I did. it and I mean, put it out? I was nervous, um, more so just about the technology and not understanding how to even go about it. You know, I mean, the way that I, I work with patients is really to kind of teach them and hold their hand and give them the information and let them run with it. Um, so, um, you know, I had taken a course on how to do it, essentially, um, and had some really good mentors um, in that course. Um, as far as the, you know, from this program, the, the HIPAA wasn't really an issue because there was no interaction between client to client, so it was really just me delivering the information and the patient, you know, grabbing the product and, and running with it. Um, but I, you know, further on in a lot of my things, you, you really do have to be careful. I did get some legal advice to make sure everything was reviewed, um, but it's, um, it's, it's a lot easier than you think it's going to be. Right. I think more, some people are very scared of that, I know, so it's uh, definitely good to talk to somebody who could kind of ease your mind on that. But uh, Absolutely. <laughs> so as far as the technical aspect of it, I know a lot of healthcare providers are like, I have no idea, I don't have any clue about how to, you know, what's, you know, WordPress, what's Wishlist member, how do I record videos on my computer, those type of things. You said, I believe you said you had a, got, you got mentors and took a course on how to... I did, I, t I took it the, the Make It Market Launch course with uh, Pam... Hendrickson and Mike Koenigs, and um, it was an online course that I registered for, and it really, literally, when I say I'm technically challenged, I mean that in the most sense of the word, and it really took my hands, and I went through this program, and it's sort of self-driven. You do it as, as you can. You know, I would do it in the evenings when I got home at night, um, but it really taught me so much about how to do this. The fact that I was able to do it with very little help was really um, amazing to me in the end. Um, but, you know, they're, they're definitely um, kind of, they definitely hold your hand through the whole thing. And there was a lot of different people with different backgrounds trying to bring out information products. But health is, is really changing, and I really think that this is sort of the future of how we can reach people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. I mean, you can get your idea out to as many people as, you know, infinite. It scales infinitely. So. Absolutely. Uh, so how did you... Do you mind if I ask, if, how, do you pra how did you package it? I mean, did you just do like screen shares? Did you do like downloadable PDFs in like a membership area? Like how did you yep. package that I did, um, I did downloadable PDFs um, and I have a membership site on Kajabi. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the, you know, the client will register for the product. Um, they'll get an invitation to the membership site and all the videos, there's like a pre-cleanse video on how to get ready, how to get excited and all the PDFs are there with recipes and menu ideas. And then um, um, each week um, there's an evergreen launch with a video. So I used to do an hour-long video. I used to do an hour-long lecture in person with the patient. So I just taped that lecture in a video presentation. And then we focus on the stress relief component. So there's meditation apps and all kinds of things on the website itself. And then they actually get a physical product delivered to them as well, which is you know, a binder with the information that's on the website, and I did do CDs because there are some, like I've had some 80-year-olds do the <laughs> do girlfriend cleanse that didn't necessarily have internet access, so, um, and uh, and then there's some products associated with it, you know, some su simple supplements that they take as well. Yeah, so quite quite extensive package yeah. like then, so. Yeah, it's I mean, pretty how cool. Did you before you launched that, I mean, how were you? How were you sure that they, that there was somebody who was going to buy that? Like, did you have? Did you pre-test the market at all and kind of say, okay, there's an interest for this. Let's let's spend some 
anything because you're you're getting physical products out and things like that. That costs a little bit more money than just like a digital Kajabi setup. So, did you? Yeah, test well, I, I I knew that I could at least um, get it out there to my own clients. So where I'd been doing this physical one on one, um, you know, I would I would have you know eight to ten or twelve women come each week. Um, this this was a need for me, you know, to be able to have those women be able to do this program whenever they could, whenever, you know, from the courtesy of their living room instead of having to come at 9 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, so I, I had, like, a network of clients that I knew I would at least be able to. And then I was excited to get it out there to people that I hadn't touched already. And that's sort of what happened, you know. Somebody in New York would do it who was my client, and they'd tell their cousin out in Arizona or, you know, their sister in California. And so it sort of became word of mouth as well as far as that. And then I had a lot of couples doing the girlfriend cleanse together. <laughs> and one gentleman said, uh, could you please come up for a male's version of this? Yeah. I, I can't tell my friends that I'm doing the girlfriend <laughs> cleanse. <laughs> so then I came up with the man up detox, which is for men. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, looks cool. I love, I love your video of that too on your sales letter your, or your sales right. page. You're just like acting kind of like a manly little voice a little more there. I like that. Like, man up, guys. Come on. Yeah, exactly. It's a different Sell approach. Up. Slightly different, but the same information. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, how did you get the. How did you. How, how are you or how did you. Did you just email that to your current. Your email list that you had at the time? Did you, How were you marketing and sh sharing this with people? Yeah, I did it with my email list. Um, and I did it. Uh, did some affiliate launch launches with some local practitioners that were very, um, you know, consistent with my message and they, they appreciated it as well because it was sort of like a hands-on program that they could send their clients home with, um, whereas opposed to they would usually recommend just a supplement program. Um, this was at least, you know, teaching the patients and giving them information. You know, they really enjoyed it. Uh, and then I did some social media stuff, but um, that's primarily how I got going. Yeah, yeah. So, how did you find these these affiliate partners? And, w and when you say that for the people listening, kind of, what does that really mean? Let's go ahead and define that for a second. Sure. So, affiliates, uh, like affiliate practitioners. So, practitioners that I've known um, that didn't really have the time to do digital products or anything like that. I just approached, you know, friends, uh, colleagues, um, and I told them about the pro program, and I let them experience it, and they you know, felt comfortable recommending it to their patients. And then um, through the um, online system, you can set up affiliate uh, launches with, with patients or, or practitioners. So you could ask a friend to recommend your program, and then they automatically get a commission based on their referrals. So it's a nice, and it keeps track of it and everything for you, which is really nice. Right, yeah, there's a couple of directories I think that you can sign up for to have this kind of affiliate tracking mm -hmm. systems in place. I don't yeah. know which which ones did you use? I used a one shopping cart. One shopping cart. Okay. Yeah. Right, cool. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, very cool. So uh, yeah, so that's pretty neat. So you're able to get it going and it started gaining traction and then all of a sudden your message started getting out to more and more people. Um, and then you looks like you made a couple apps. Was that next or Yep, I did a couple of apps. I actually uh, uh, my brother had a company was making apps so that worked out kind of wow. well for me. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, so I got uh, some apps for the detoxes as well as for the center, and that's just a nice way to be able to connect with patients. Again, you know, I find email is very difficult. People are getting so many emails. Nobody's going to open, you know, hundred emails a day. So, email, I, I feel like, is falling by the wayside as far as being able to connect with people. I think they need quick, easy ways to be able to get the information and the apps and text campaigns and things like that are really, I think, the way to help. Get make it easy for patients to connect. Right, right. So you've done quite an extensive, you know, amount of, of I guess you could say modes of content production. You know, you're able to put your content out on a lot of different areas. You know, physical clinic, you know, digital products, apps. I think I saw you do webinars at times. It looks like yeah, I saw your mm -hmm. webinar jam set up there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, did you do all of this on your own? Because there's a lot of practitioners out there, their knees are probably knocking right now. They're like, oh, my God, this is so much stuff. How do I get started? I mean, did you do that all on your own? And how long did that take to, to get I all did. this up? You did. Oh, wow. I did. Yeah, I did. Um, you know, I just took one project at a time, you know, and just, you know, complete the one thing and then move on to the next. And, you know, I, I find it exciting with the digital world that it is because I think as a practitioner you get tired because there's only, you can only see one patient in, you know, in an hour. You can only see so many people at one time. And at some point you want to help so many people, but you, you can get burned out. And 
Um, and I think that's where a lot of practitioners are, having to see so many people um, that I feel that this is really exciting and will be even more exciting to healthcare practitioners because you can see, you know, I can be taking care of 10 people during the cleanse while I'm seeing patients. And right. that's that's where it's exciting because you can really, multi it's almost like multiplying yourself to be able to do that. So where it requires a lot of effort up front, getting the programs done, now the cleanses are just rolling. You know, they're done, they're out there, um, they're helping people, and um, and it doesn't require my one-on-one -on -one time, which is really, really helpful because then you can move on to the next project. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. You, know? so, and you, you get recurring you know, business and recurring help from everybody. It's, it's Absolutely. A leverage, it's, it's, right? It's leverage. It's, so. Yeah, it is, and it's a really a win-win. I mean, you know, it's nice to know, you know, I was at the beach today, and, and there was five people doing the cleanse, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just... It was good to do. Perfect, perfect, yeah. And just for everybody listening, you know, you don't have to do all of that yourself. I mean, it is a, quite a process. How long did it take you, by the way? Did you ever say? You know, to actually launch the program, I think it took me seven months. From seven the time months. that I started taking the course to finishing the course to actually getting it out there, I think it took me seven months. You okay. know, and there is, there's, I mean, so much help out there. You can get consultants to do a mm -hmm. lot. I mean, my programmer was, you know, out of Ireland, um, and I had a graphics guy out of India. And there's yeah. so many websites now that you can hire people to do all these things that I would never. I mean, I couldn't have pr programmed the website and the Kajabi and all that, you know. So to get someone to help you with that is is actually relatively easy, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. Yeah. So it's you know, you can go to like Elance or, or even yeah. Fiverr.com, which is right. like a, kind of an inexpensive way to get graphics and even even some wet, little bit of web design. And, you know, you gotta kinda watch that a little bit, make sure that they're reputable people and they do a decent job. But you can give them a little simple project to start with and then see how their responsiveness is, see how, how good their work is and you can build relationships uh, through those means as well. So it's just there's yeah, so many absolutely. you know virtual assistants out there. A lot of people don't even know what that word means, but a uh, good service is called Virtual Staff Finder by Chris Ducker. I know he has a lot of excellent VAs in the Philippines that do amazing work. They speak good English and they they're just excellent workers. And so really, there's no excuse if you have the ideas in your head. There's people to help you get it in a package and get it out the door. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, like like you went through, but it's definitely doable. Yeah. It is. It really is. And I've used both those Elance and Fiverr myself. Yeah, yeah, they're both great. Yeah. Exactly. So, so what's one piece of advice you would give, or let, let's start with a challenge first, maybe. What were some of the biggest challenges? Because you've 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 you were, you had this aha moment where you said, "I need to get into holistic medicine," and from that point, you you studied it. You got under a, a mentor for a year, then you jumped in and opened your own place fairly quickly. And then started doing that, and then started thinking about outside the box again, as far as how can I get my 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 ideas and my skills out to a bigger audience. And you launched into digital product production and online marketing, and looks like you have a very nice social media following. Uh, oh, that's a lot. That's a lot for people. You know, that's really really cool. So, I mean, what was one of the biggest challenges? I mean, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't always easy. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. the beginning was just letting people know that I was there. You know. Yeah. Um, that was probably one of the biggest challenges. Um, and then, um, you know, when I was doing the, you in the beginning, were you ignored? Or did you feel ignored? Or I just didn't, you know, I mean, without a, a huge budget to go out there and market and get in every magazine and get a PR person, it's really just knocking on doors and it's a lot of physical time. Um, once, you know, once people start leaving happy, then they start telling their friends and family, but it takes a little time to build that traction up, you know, um, just simply getting enough people through the door to get that word out there. You know, I would say probably tipping point was about three years where it really started to feel like, okay, I don't have to work so hard and knock on doors and go meet people. They're, now they're, the constant flow is happening, which is really, it takes time, and that first three years is scary, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? so it takes, it takes time. Right, yeah. you didn't just like, oh, this is easy, right? No, you worked your butt off for yeah. three plus. You're still working your butt off, but you're you know, three working. plus yeah. years, right. you know, of like really grinding it and meeting people and you know, absolutely, and puts in doors and all those things. Absolutely. Uh, I don't want to, a friend of mine was telling me, I think he was a chiropractor in, in, in an area, he said to go out and give speaking engagements. He said that was one of the yes. biggest things that got him started was call a few local civic centers like Elks or whatever. They always need speakers and then give a speech um, you know, on your niche, around your niche. It doesn't have to be exactly, but on, around your niche to a group of people 
and then give something away at the end of the speech and in exchange for a business card or something like that. And, and he built Absolutely. his local network that way fairly well. Uh, yeah, people want to see you. They you know they want to touch you. They want to you know get to know you before they come through the door. So speaking engagements are wonderful. Right, right. So people need to know, like, and trust you, just like anything yeah, else. So. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the biggest challenge for you was just what the time and the effort involved and in getting out, or is there? A specific yeah, I think thing? so. I mean, I think the the time and effort, um, getting the following built up, that was definitely that was the hardest part. I think. Right. Any yeah. tips for people that are newer at that or maybe don't have 2,000 Facebook friends like you have? <laughs> yeah, I didn't always have 2,000 Facebook friends. <laughs> okay. um, you know, I mean, I think finding consistency, you know, just um, like you said, if you're doing lectures, do the lectures consistently. People can count on it. I, you know, I was doing for a little while, I had a great, I uh, did healthy happy hours. You know, once a month, we open open house, healthy happy hours, we give out green smoothies and, you know, pomegranate teenies minus the alcohol, um, and gave a lecture. And that was fun, and people loved that. Um, you know, it's just, um, you know, have fun with it. That's the most important part. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. And you have a really neat new project going. You have an Indiegogo campaign, uh, I yes. believe, on kind of a natural approach to preventing breast cancer, I believe. Do you want to share yes. a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I, um, I started doing my Ph.D., um, so I uh, had wanted to study um, the thermography I was telling about earlier, that technology. Um, we do thermography for breasts, um, and what it does is it picks up, uh, it's a picture, just you come in, you take a picture, and it picks up inflammation and patterns in the breast, and that can give us a guide of whether that woman's at risk for breast cancer. Um, and, um, and then we put them on a protocol, and we bring them back three months later and a year later, and we show the change that they made to reduce the risk of breast cancer. So I've been doing this for three years um, with amazing results. Um, and my PhD mentor is um, Dr. Jo George Einstein. He's actually a relative of Albert Einstein. Okay. Um, and I had gone down to do a program with him, and he had studied farm for red technology at NASA. And he, I was telling him about my practice and what I was doing. He's like, oh, you have to do your PhD with me. You have to. And I thought, how could I say no to a Dr. Einstein? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I'm doing it. So I was like, how am I going to fund this thing? You know, there's no big pharmaceutical company to fund my research. I'm using natural products and a far to red, farm for red camera. Um, so I had stumbled upon an article that the Tisch Foundation had raised um, money for stem cell research and um, through crowdfunding. And I'm like, crowdfunding? What's crowdfunding? I didn't really know much about it. Um, and I went on uh, Indiegogo and I was like, wow, this is incredible. Look at the money these people are raising, you know, for some some sometimes silly inventions. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of crap on there, definitely. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, wow, if they could do this for this, you know, I could do something really great here and um, and get this research documented. So that's what I'm doing. So, you know, the, the campaign is... Um, Groundbreaking research and um, preventing breast cancer, and um, we're looking to raise three hundred fifteen thousand dollars to put a hundred women through this breast prevention protocol. Um, and it's going to be an eighteen-month program. Uh, the women will get it, um, you know, the program for free. Uh, it costs about a thousand dollars per woman to go through the eighteen-month program. Um, and I'm excited. I mean, I, I, um, I've been seeing these success stories for years in my practice. I'm mostly excited about getting this research out there so we can get it documented and we can get everybody's attention on it um, because it really is, it's, you know, there's no emphasis in prevention in our medical training, unfortunately. I mean, I can speak for my own training. Um, we can cure and we can treat disease very, very well, um, but prevention is really where it matters. I mean, for me, having lost family members, gosh, I would have given anything to have prevented that whole experience. And I know that everybody can connect with that and feels that way about someone they love, you know? Right, right. So it's yeah. exciting. That's awesome. That's really neat. So it seems like that, you know, our Western medicine model is more, is, is, is solid at handling, handling acute problems like emergency care, you know, advanced diagnostics. Our diagnostic equipment is excellent. But when it comes to preventative medicine, the Eastern medicine approach is just much more solid there and they do a much better job and I don't know if there's, there's just some kind of divide there or if it's politics and and, and, and you know, lobbyists and money that's separating those two like the pharma companies or what I don't know how much we want to get into that now but there seems yeah. to be a, a definite divide there and, and it's uh, really I, I admire people like yourself who are going out there and 
and bringing that other piece to the table and pushing it into the forefront and the, the forefront because it's true it, it works you know you see it all the time you know we've all had health things that have happened and you know it's just you know what you eat is important right what you, what you're doing exercise wise what you're doing you know in all these different ways is is critical right so you know it's just not mentioned you know by yeah. That side of medicine. <laughs> I mean, it isn't. You know, my all my training, I never learned anything about you know nutrition or um, you know um, stress and the effect it can have and what I should do to try to talk to my patients. We really just aren't taught about it at all. Yeah. It's not the focus at all on the education. Um, and I think that that's going to shift. I mean, I really think that we have to focus on preventing disease. Um, there's just so many people that are sick in the United States that it's got to. The burden is on us to really make a change, you know. Yeah. Well, we could talk forever on this. This just gets your yes. blood going, you know, all the crap that's going on in the world here, <laughs> in our country in particular. But yes. um, Okay, well, Christine, thank you so much. That was awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing your story and your passion and some tips for all of us today. Let's just have you share a little bit of, uh, with our viewers about where we can find out more about you, your campaigns, uh, and then we'll say goodbye. Sure, absolutely. My website is... Um, getintegrativehealth.com and um, you can get a link to the different the girlfriend cleanse and the man up detox on there as well as my indiegogo campaign um, which is groundbreaking research uh, preventing breast cancer uh, right to the indiegogo campaign and search for that and I'll pop up sounds great awesome yeah. and and guys we'll link up all of those those con that con your contact information your indiegogo we'll link that up on the replay page of this interview so uh, thank you so much, Christine, for coming on and, and, and chatting with us today. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Yeah, no problem. All right. I hope you all enjoyed that conversation. It was a lot of great information on, on you know, marketing, healthcare, you know, holistic health, all kinds of great stuff. So if you're looking, if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher Radio, go over to newwavehealthcare.com and you can simply type in Christine's name in the search bar and her show notes page will pop right up with all of her contact information. Uh, all of the resources that we mentioned during this conversation today. That's uh, Christine with a K. That's K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Christine. So that's it for now, everybody. I will see you on the next one.